I was nearly seven and my brother was nine months old and my biological mother murdered my brother. The murder was horrific. It includes 22 stab wounds. Um, you know, his head was hit against the wall. Um, strangulation, um, immersed in water and stuff. It was absolutely horrible. What would you say you're most grateful for in relation to the coaching masters and your coaching journey and what you've built so far? What, what are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for having a business, I think, on a more of an emotional level, and we are changing lives. You know, Coach Master, we say we're changing lives, we actually are changing lives. And sometimes we're changing lives because of the life that we had. If someone didn't step in and change our own lives, we wouldn't have that percep uh, perception that actually it is possible to change lives, and it starts with yourself. <sighs> well. Well, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. And I just want to say, first and foremost, your resourcefulness is unbelievable. And we're going to get into this. <laughs> but the fact that I messaged you yesterday. Yeah. And for those people that are watching this, you know, people might be watching this in a year's time, 10 years time, 15 years time. There's a train strike right now yeah, going on across the country. And, uh, and you live in Brighton. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're here in London, and I was like, Karina, you've got to be the first guest on the TCM podcast in the studio. Can you make it to London for 10 a.m.? And you're here. I'm here. I'm not going to miss this opportunity, am I? <laughs> it's, too, it's too big. It's too big. First, first guest on this show, studio recording for something incredible, which the audience will hear shortly. Yeah. Where I'm coming from. <laughs> So strikes were happening. What did I send you a message saying? Don't fo don't chase the train. <laughs> Focus on the destination. <laughs> and I thought well, I better not have a delay now because <laughs> that will mess up. But yeah, I'm here, ready to go. I've got a feeling it's going to be a very strong, hearty, powerful conversation. Definitely strong, hearty, powerful conversation. And that is that's so you, Karina. You know. And that's what I'm really looking forward to the listeners and the viewers, of course, now that yes. we're filming this for everybody, the listeners and the viewers, I want them to be able to get that and receive that from you. And I know they will. But let's let's go right back to the right beginning. Right back to the beginning. Right back to the Once beginning. Once upon a time. Once upon <laughs> a time. And, and, and you get to decide where the beginning is. Mm -hmm. you, you sent me a really interesting message. Actually, shall I mention that now? I'll mention it after because right. it, it ties into adversity that you've you've experienced. Okay. I sent so many, I don't know which one you're going to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I love your messages as well, by the way. I love your messages of support and just... Super hyper. Super <laughs> hyper, full of that energy. Where, where, when I say to you, let's go back to the beginning, your beginning, mm. what, what, what instinctively comes up for you? Where is your beginning? It's funny because as you said that, I, my my mind kind of rewound, mm. like I had this rewind, literal rewind, and it went to that point <clears throat> of the night that I was in bed. I just, I just found out that day that I was made redundant, and it mm. was a shock thing, you know, shock outcome. And I was from a Fortune 500 company where I was doing leadership. I, you know, I was doing so well, and mm. I've done so many other things with the company. I was devastated. And something happens when you when you feel like you, you're losing your job or when you know, or you, you kind of re refer to it as losing your job, obviously, you know, there's there's kind of a route around that. Mm. Um, but I went into absolute panic mm. and it will make sense why in, in a bit as we unfold, my story unfolds. But that's the point I went to and I was searching everywhere to try and find a job, mm. everywhere to try and find what am I gonna do now? What like proper, my brain was just like alert, alert, danger, danger, danger. It was like the world was falling apart, mm. but re reality was it wasn't falling apart. I just needed a moment of calm mm. to figure out where I needed to go next. And it was yourself and the other CEO's uh, video where you mm. were on stage. And I watched that and I fell asleep while I was watching it. Mm. This is real. I fell asleep while I was watching it. I woke up. This is quite a lengthy chat. Yeah, talk that one, you know, me and Lewis talking your, up your on stage. Your voice is so lovely. I, <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep. I woke up and the first thing I wanted to do was find out who these people were. Wow. That was the first thing. And I woke up, autopilot. You guys will have the date somewhere of what date it was. Mm. And I reached out. And I was so, like, I was in a state of devastation, mm. really bad. Like, I felt like I couldn't breathe. 
anxiety was through the roof and I had this phone call with this really lovely lady, I can't remember who it was, and I booked another appointment mm. to then have a chat. Mm. With the coaching masters. With the coaching masters, yeah. That's what I the find, beginning. <laughs> see, this, this is really interesting to me because, yeah. and I love asking that question because you never know where the person is gonna go, Yeah. right? And it's so intriguing that, and it, and it says a lot as well, that mm. that to you is the beginning because it obviously is a very significant beginning for you. Let's rewind even before <laughs> that. Let's go even earlier in your life because yeah. what I want the listeners to really get is who you are. Mm. You know, we are talking to Karina Karen. Of course, I know Karina <laughs> as a coaching master's yes, student, <laughs> but not just a student, but a superstar student. And I'm very looking forward to her un unraveling that as part of the story. Mm. I want to get to know the Karina before are you ready you were ever <laughs> <laughs> introduced are you ready, to the coaching you masters <laughs> strap in everyone we're gonna go it's gonna be a hell of a ride we're gonna go deep on this one and it's gonna be a ride so when i say go back even more go yeah. go back even earlier what comes to mind well what comes to mind is like my story mm. and you know a lot of times people ask the question who are you and when i answer that question i answer it like this I'm an incredible human being that has always believed in themselves. And because of that, I'm alive and I'm here today. Mm -hmm. But I say that with so much um, humility, I can't say the word, humbleness and gratefulness to the universe and to the people that have interacted and affected my life. Coaching Masters being one. And so many other people within the Coaching Masters as well that I've managed to interact with. And yeah. also through my life, there's been pinnacle people. Sometimes when we, when we start in life, not everyone has like the best start in life. It's, uh, we hear it in the news every day, in the papers, books that you read, famous people, you, you know, read their autobiography and their lives haven't started as planned as you would want. And I know you're a parent. I'm yep. not one yet, but I will be. Yep. I, I think I messaged you about that at one point as well. <laughs> you will. Um, but, and thank you. Um, I was born into parents that were not ready to have children. Mm. It was an arranged um, marriage so that my father could come into the country. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so my biological mother had serious mental health issues, but illness mm. that wasn't uncovered fully. Mm. She was meant to be paid, dad come in the country, then they divorced, that was the plan. So we're going back to the, uh, like before the 70s, I was born 77. What year were you born? 77 77 so just so ju just explain that that scenario again mm -hmm. with your parents so were they a couple so my father came over from south america yep so i've got south american roots cool it's good for food um and my biological mother was born actually in sussex where i've ended up living which is so random interesting so random mm. so not sure about the dynamics of how they found each other, mm. but it was arranged. Okay. So English person, a Guyanese man. Mm -hmm. She was meant to be paid. Um, apparently the, the payment didn't go through, mm -hmm. like it didn't happen, and she got pregnant. That's where I came in. Wow. But they were not ready to be parents. So whenever I say this, although I might feel how I feel about my whole life's past, mm. I say what I say with respect to both parents because at that time they would have had their own issues. And we only know what it's like now with our issues nowadays, right? So it's important to be fair if you don't know the history, mm. someone else's history, right? Wow. So I say it respectfully. Love that. I was born, they were not ready. By the age of three days old, I'd been beaten up. I was put into children's home for my safety. Mm. When I so I got this is factual information from the reports that we got recently, myself and my brother, who'll come into the picture in a bit. Yeah. In and out of children's home for safety, mm. for the welfare. Now, we hear it again in the media, we hear of child abuse happening, physical, not sexual at this point. Yeah. I was one of those children. I was one of those babies that was going through child abuse because the parents didn't know how to look after a child. So mm. therefore, not picking the child up, which was myself, not feeding, not clothing, all that stuff was missing. Mm. And as we know, as I go through the coaching journey, these are that intimate connection between people, connection mm. between people, having a mm. sense of belonging is so needed mm -hmm. for the growth of that child, you know, for that child's brain to grow healthily 
so that they can manage emotions. So I was in and out of, of care. Um, I'll just pause a second. <laughs> I was intense. <laughs> This is this it, is yeah. this is real. This is yeah, real. Yeah, it is real. You yeah. know, and this is, and those and those feelings and those emotions that you're feeling right now mm. are one hundred percent valid. Yeah, and they're one hundred percent real, and they never ever feel like you yeah. need to shield any of them in this room when you're yeah. talking to me, or mask. I never get emotional. In That's any so way. random. Yeah, you I get emotional, actually, yeah. Karina. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. free. Yeah. to get emotional and i have absolutely no doubts five minutes into this episode <laughs> i'm going to be joining you on that journey yeah. getting emotional you feel it and yeah. you don't ever feel like you need to hide it you never need to mask it you never yeah. need to change it you 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 feel it you feel i appreciate it. that i appreciate that so yeah i'll go back to that point so it's funny because this um part of the journey it's in the last two years so we're 2022 going into 2023 now so in the last two years that we've uncovered the reality of how bad it was mm. because we got myself and my brother who's born two years after me mm. we got our report from the social services recently team. yeah wow so that was hard <laughs> you know wow. when you so everything i'm saying now is combined with how i felt as a child combined with the facts of actually what happened because i had these feelings I had these this imagery stuff, you know, that was coming popping back up in my head, and people might say, "Oh, it's mental health." I'll go into what it actually is. Mm. Um, I didn't know if it was real. Mm. I didn't know if I made it up because I was unlo I felt unloved. Did I make all of this up? Was yeah. it all a load of shit? Yeah. But actually, the facts told us that none of it was crap. It was all real. See, that is a really incredible. When I put my 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 NLP mm. hat on, my yeah. coaching hat on. Mm -hmm understanding that there is such a fine line between remembering something and imagining something yeah and the the lines are blurred a lot of the time yeah to be in a situation where you're questioning for such a long period of time is that remembered or is it imagined yeah and then you get the facts yeah. you find out the as answer to that adult. question as a grown adult you get given the report yeah which confirms that it was remembered and it wasn't imagined yeah what what's that like it's like a bomb going off inside your whole body it, it the ricochet of that is it's absolutely horrible because all of the um unconditional love that you gave regardless because as a for myself as a child as someone's child I still had this kind of string of unconditional love for both parents. It, got, it gets really, really worse, by the way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm. I've always had it. I lost respect. So I'm still fighting with that. <laughs> Not fighting with it. I feel quite, actually, I feel quite content with the fact that I don't have respect for these people now. Yeah. I feel okay with it. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that's like, oh, you have to forgive and forget. No, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do in life. It's important that you do what's right for you. Because when you leave the world, you leave the world alone. No one's gonna be like, you didn't do this, you didn't do it. You're gone, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think Karina it's important. Karen, <laughs> this, is, this is why you are who you are. <laughs> and this is why you're here today. So yeah, please yeah. continue. That is just beautiful to hear. Thank you. So. I've done, you know, therapy and stuff, but I'm going to go back a little bit. So let me go back to where I was. Yeah, um, do. So in and out of children's home, my brother was born. He's a KK as well. So my initials are KK. He's a KK, so we're double Ks. Um, <laughs> he was born. And there was a lot of favoritism. My, my brother is white. It wasn't the same dad. He's white, hazel brown eyes, blondy brown hair. Mm. So there was favoritism because in... On your mum's part. My dad's part. On your dad's part. My dad's part, it, because so I'll <coughs> explain, because in Guyana, in the country that, that he's from, it was a British colony. Mm. It is a British colony, as far as I know now. But they had never seen white people. Mm. So the white person, mm. for them, was like really high up. It was like, mm. you can't get to a better status. Because it's rare. Yeah, it right. was rare. But he was in the UK with a child that was white. But it was like, the best thing that could have happened. And how, how did that occur? Because your brother has a different dad. Yeah, that, that means my my biological mum would have had an affair. Okay, yeah. and your your dad was aware. <clears throat> they were both having affairs as far as we know. Both having affairs, yeah. but then all of a sudden your mum's pregnant, there's another baby. Yes. This baby's white. Yeah. 
And so by the sounds of it, instead of there being a kind of uproar of questioning, yeah. there's more of a, wow, I've just gained this yeah. trophy. <laughs> Yeah, of a, a white baby, which yeah. from where I come from, mm. um, is is a trophy. Yeah, wow, exactly. Um, I was excited. Obviously, I'm going to have a brother. Yeah, and the reports show from the children's home all I was talking about. Obviously, I was only like two and a half or something. All I'm like Beautiful. talking about was like my whole focus was this baby, but then it became apparent that I was thinking about this baby as though I needed to look after this child. Mm because no one was looking after me. So that was another thing the children's home had to deal with as well, because mm. I became stressed that mm. I was gonna have to look after this baby. Mm. It's transpired, that's basically what happened. It's instinct. Yeah. There's that instinct. Yeah, I was like, instinct in the sense of, <coughs> I was left at home with my brother as a baby. I was like free, just under free. Mm. I had to look after him, we was like, not left with food, was neglected, like urinating, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, You're a baby. It was too much, yeah. I, I actually, I've got little flashes of certain things. I just remember my brother always being hungry and me not knowing how to feed him. That always like affects me even now because I think of all the children in the world that do not have food. We had food, but we couldn't get access to it. Mm because there wasn't an adult to show us how to get it, you know? As someone who has a two-year-old daughter. Yeah, you do. Beautiful girl. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, posy. Very colleague. intelligent as well. Very intelligent. <laughs> it genuinely, it makes me emotional because it's, it's hard enough as an adult mm. when your baby is hungry yeah. or tired or upset or and you're thinking, what is it? I don't know what it is. I've yeah. got to just try to help and stop them from being upset. Yeah. As a grown adult, as a three-year-old girl, mm. a tiny baby yourself, mm. who's got this newborn brother at the, at the time, I guess one-year-old brother, mm -hmm. and having that same level of questioning, how do I help? How do I stop them from crying? How do I feed them? Yeah. You should never have been in that situation. Yeah. And I, I believe that to be true. And so many children, are, I know, you know, this podcast will be global, but I'm based in the UK and I know this is happening in the UK. And that's why I am a massive advocate for children's charities, certain children's charities. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, if we keep delivering the message, which takes me into the work that I do a little bit later on, of course. then we can make that difference. And we are changing lives. You mm. know, Coach Master, we say we're changing lives. We actually are changing lives. And sometimes we're changing lives because of the life that we had. If someone didn't step in and change our own lives, we totally. wouldn't have that percep uh, perception that actually it is possible to change lives and it starts with yourself. I love that. Now that they say charity starts at home. You know what, it's actually okay to say that mm. because you need to look after you and your household and your little family before you can help others. So you know? true. It's, so and true. It's, so, it's so important to remember that. It's not a selfish thing. So I was looking after my brother, you know, they took us back into the children's home. And my brother was like taken to Guyana for my dad to show his family, my brother. This is where it gets, uh, starts getting worse. I experienced sexual child abuse mm -hmm. in the children's home. It's probably the first time I'm saying this, speaking it out loud, yeah. other than on my podcast. Um, it's something I'm not quite ready to talk about sure. because I haven't gone through it fully sure. in therapy. And also it's something that's with the police at the moment as well. Sure. So, you know, the two things that I bring up in this podcast, it's been, they're both being reported to the police. So sure. went through that, which was awful. The, the other girls in the children's home around the same age went through the same thing. It was an all girls one. And the threat, this is the thing that makes me very angry about the way certain adults choose, um, make their choices or choose to live their life. Everything that happened there was because of adults. Everything that happened to me when I was, from the moment I was born was because of adults. Adults that are in a position of authority. I look at the work that yourself and Lewis do does and other people, other companies and stuff, and you just think, because you've been through advers adversities as well. You guys made a choice to do what you're doing. Lewis made a choice to make a change in his life. He had this pattern behavior, which like is completely understandable when you look at a trauma cycle but he made a choice. That would have not been easy at all. 
that especially that initial to middle part of it would have been so hard. The stuff that you experienced, which I know your audience may be aware of, <coughs> and, and your <coughs> partner as well. Mm -hmm. You guys made a choice. We're gonna stick together and we're gonna, we love each other and it's unconditional. Nothing's gonna break that. Mm -hmm. Regardless of mental health, regardless of whatever happens moving forward. And then obviously you've got your little one as well now, yeah? Of course. I experienced adults that were not doing that. They were doing the opposite. They were making choices to hurt, to damage people for their own gratification, for their own pleasure, which is yeah. such a horrible word to even use in this cons in this um, type of conversation. But that's what was happening. I was then put into, this was like a, a very positive thing that then happened, put into a foster family, which was like the changing point. This is where I started dreaming differently and believing life was possible. Is your mum gone at this point? My biological mum is going in and out of um, in and out of, uh, mental institutions. <coughs> she had mental illness, but it wasn't fully uncovered. They were not aware of the extent of the abuse that was happening. Yeah. Remember, it was physical and neglect, not sexual. So it was. Ju we just kept going back to her, having visits with her. Mm. But every time I went back, I'd have some kind of pain should either burn me. It was like really bad, like burning, beating up, thrown across the room. Remember, I'm under the age of four at this point. Tiny. I'm tiny. I can't ask for help because the person that I need help from is the person that's inflicting the pain. Yeah. Cycle, and it was going on. We get thrown into this uh, incredible family, foster family in Skegness, <laughs> which is an old school seaside town in yeah. the UK. <coughs> um, <coughs> Funny and name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But for, for us, we suddenly, myself and my brother, because he was back, you know, he was back with me, we were suddenly thrown into this world of fairgrounds and, mm. you know, ice Nice cream. family. Beautiful family. They loved us, absolutely loved us. Yeah. You know, family that we're very, very close to. And was this a, a full-time thing? You were with them seven days a week? You lived there? We lived there. them completely. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For about, it was around about two years. Wow. Really, I just felt like I had a mum. And this is, was this between four and six? -ish? Yes. There. So that was between, say four and f four or five to six. Yeah, around that, that kind of age group. That is a significant age yeah. as well. I mean, two years yeah. in the lifespan of a child that young, that's a, that's a lot incredible. longer than what it is to me and you today. Yeah. You know, statistically a year gets shorter every single year of your life yeah. that goes by. True. So for a two year, for, for a four, five year old, mm -hmm. two years is nearly half your life. I know. You know. Just it was absolutely incredible. Lived in a chalet or like a caravan thing. Yeah. Like every day, just, we didn't have to pay for anything because I think my foster father owned or co-owned the caravan park at the time. Heaven. We had wow. a little dog that I used to go with and like there's pictures of me at that time, I'm just in my element. You can see I'm just so happy, rosy cheeks, really yeah. happy. Um, and then suddenly I remember being put into a car and it was just over. I didn't understand what was going on. Our hair was getting brushed and it was getting sorted out. What happened was my biological dad decided he didn't want us to be there anymore. He was gonna get married. And it was, all, again, it must've been arranged. It was arranged. Um, to this mother who I absolutely love, my adopted mum. But it happened all suddenly. So there's this cut, sudden shock, like I remember yeah. being happy and then being unhappy, but then being happy again. <sighs> and you're so young, <laughs> so little. It was crazy. Back to the flats where we used to live. So for me, I remember feeling like, oh God, it's all gonna go wrong again. Mm. You know, and you thinking, hadn't seen these flats for two years? I didn't seen it at all. Jeez. I had, you know, when we were taken, we were taken with no, we just had the clothes we had. So we kind of went straight back into a bit of poverty straight away. Yeah. Um, walked in and again, another pinnacle moment. There was this lady, looked like my color. I was like, this is all right. <laughs> Someone like <laughs> licking my face to try and sort my hair out. I was like, oh, get off. Um, <laughs> this, this woman, this atten woman attentive there. and there. Yeah, and, and she looked at me <laughs> and I just like, just went and held her hand. Okay. And I looked up at her and I was like, are you gonna be my mum? And she said in a Guyanese accent, I'll give it a go. She was like, you want dad? <laughs> and I, was like, I was thinking, I don't know what she's saying. I was like, yeah. And I just thought, I looked at her and her eyes was like, so kind and so loving. Mm. When I was younger, you know, when everything was going wrong, I used to read a lot of kind of like the Disney like storybooks and stuff yeah. like that, like Pinocchio, yeah. which I know is quite a big, 
big one. It's a hit at the moment, isn't it? It is. The Blue Fairy. I actually believed in magic. I believed that things could happen if you just really believed. Mm. I was one of those kids. I just mm. really believed. I, I believed in magic. Mm. I believed in fairies. I believed in everything magical. Mm. And I remember in the children's home, I used to think if I really, really believe hard enough and that sometimes I'll just be in tears every single day, I'm going to have a new mum. Wow. I'm going to have a new mum. And I believed it and believed it and believed it. And this, this is quite a, an important kind of thing to, for us to touch back down on when mm. I go into the coaching journey. Because mm. that when you have a strong belief in something, you can actually make it happen. Yeah. Make, it becomes so real in your mind mm. that nothing else can destroy it. I mean, that is a very useful belief to have. Yeah. If you have a belief that if you believe in something strong enough and you continue believing in it mm -hmm. and you're relentless with that level of belief, then you will create it in one way or another. Yes. That, I think, is can't be argued with. That, that is a skill. Yeah. And that is very useful <laughs> to have that. And what a beautiful thing to have at such a young age yeah. where it would have been completely understandable for you to have not had any level of optimism. Yeah or any kind of level of belief that was empowering in any way. And you did. I know. I don't it like even <coughs> now, like if like I've been in therapy for a couple of years, even the therapist is like, what is this thing that you've got? And I can't touch it or I don't mm. know what it is, but it's just this thing inside me that believes that I am someone. I just believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, honestly, Karina, the amount of people that have the opposite experience that believe they're no one. Mm. And they're not, they're someone, but yeah. they haven't tapped into that yet. I'm hoping that all of the listeners and the viewers are inspired by that. Because if you have this little girl who is in that dire situation, pain and abuse and confusion, mm -hmm. and there's, there, is no, there is no reason to have optimism or belief. Absolutely yet, no reason, yeah. You have the belief and have had the belief that you are someone. Yes. And therefore, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Even if you don't know what that is at the time, there's a belief that, that you have that. That's a beautiful thing. And people should be inspired by that. And I really hope they are because as well, as this story unfolds, there's so much power to, you know, around that, mm. what I've said there. So, you know, suddenly was adopted at the same time, by, my biological, by this Guyanese woman. Yeah. <laughs> that was my now my mum. Who was with your dad, were with they a dad, couple? Yeah, they, they, it was uh, it was arranged, um, but it was two Guyanese mm. parents now, sure. biological dad and her. So obviously we had to be adopted by a biological by our um, stepmom. I, I don't like using the word stepmom mm -hmm. because there was no step around it. She just she came and she was our mum, you yeah. know. But I know we have to have it in the because of laws and stuff. But I see her as a mum. The person that was my biological mum wasn't a mother mm. and it's I'm the, allowed it's to the say law it. of Karina yeah like, I'm allowed to say it <laughs> you you you, you yeah. exactly you say whatever you want you yeah. process this information terminology you use the word whatever you want it's, yeah. it's what matters to you so we're thrown into the Guyanese culture the music the food it was just completely different didn't quite understand what our mum was saying nearly all the time. We just said yes to everything because it usually meant we got loads of food, <laughs> usually loads yeah, and loads yeah, of food. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So it was quite, it was an enjoyable, it was really enjoyable. At the same time, my biological mum had another child. His name's Yusuf. I was so excited. I thought, wow, I've got a mum. I couldn't have been more excited. I was nearly seven now. I was thinking, I've got a mum, I've got two mums. <laughs> I've got, two, I've got two, two brothers. I was like, so excited. I thought, thank you. Mm. Thank you. I believed in God as well. I don't even know how that transpired, but I was like, thank you, God. I'm so excited. And there's no, there's no abuse happening at this time in your life. Is there that was no right? abuse at this point. Did no you, abuse. was there a level of protection from your new mum? My, with my real mum, because my biological father just didn't like me. Mm. She was always protecting me in a sense of they were always arguing because of me. Your biological mum? My biological father. Yeah. And, and your, my stepmom. Your, your, yeah. yeah. So I always say mum for my stepmom, and I always say biological mother for my biological cool. mother. I always do it in that way. Cool. Um, he really just didn't like me. Mm. I still don't know why, but I don't care why anymore. <laughs> Before I cared. Yeah. Um, 
So they was always arguing, but I was okay. Like I wasn't being harmed in any way. Went over, so it was uh, me and my brother, the one that I mentioned earlier, the other double K, were um, mm. getting to see our biological mum and then baby came. So I went and saw my brother, newborn, name's Yusuf. And um, yeah, I just had the best time with him. Mm. And I, I've got a really like beautiful memory, which I talk about quite a lot, because it's, so, it's so pinnacle, it's so, it just means so much to me. I got a chance to like, I remember when he's like nine months old, so see this table here, is eight, like holding on and then walking around the table. Yeah. And I was like, so happy to see, I was like, well done Yusuf. Like really like, yeah, yeah, you're well done. I remember him just coming over to me, kind of, you know when they go to hold your face and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw up on my face. Uh. And I was like, I remember like, oh, this is so gross. Yeah. Um, thinking, don't make it go in your mouth, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and he was just laughing his head off. Like he just, he just found it so funny. We used to do things like um, pick daisies and I used to put it into his hand, like he'd be like sitting in front of me and then he'd just like throw them up in the air yeah, <laughs> as babies yeah. do. But yeah, the um, nine months old, that particular memory was the last time I saw my brother alive. This bit's hard. <laughs> so I was nearly seven and my brother was nine months old and my biological mother murdered my brother. So, it just like it just took the trauma to another level yeah. and uh i was absolutely devastated do you feel comfortable to talking about yeah how that transpired yeah i feel comfortable thankfully because i've done the therapy that's enabled me to be able to speak yeah i had an issue with my speech before because of every time i thought of it it just stopped me from speaking yeah sure um but yeah we uh, uh, we weren't meant to be seeing a biological mum. Mm. That's an error in the system once mm, again. Mm. Put my life in danger. Obviously my brother's life was in danger. And you were seeing her alone, not yeah. under any sort of supervision. Yeah. It was you, your two brothers and your mum. It was me, my other brother, the other double K didn't really go. Yeah, okay. Because he wanted to stay at home as a little boy. He wanted to stay home and play. Doesn't yeah. want to play with a baby yeah, <laughs> necessarily, okay, you know, okay. just normal little boy thing. Um, so I would always go and um, yeah, it just, it was like, don't tell anyone that you're going to see your mum. Wow. And her mental health illness was really bad. But, you know, there was a, my biological dad, this is where we believe it all stemmed from, basically said, because he had custody, custody of me and my brother, basically said that, I'm going to leave you with nothing. I'm going to take him away from you. And in the court case, after, you know, after everything, you know, I was going through before she served the sentence. She said, there's no way I was gonna let anyone take my child away from him. If if um, if um, anyone else is gonna have him, no one can have him. So therefore, yeah, and that's basically, it was a horrific murder. Um, You can hear me go a bit wheezy whenever I think of about course, it. Of course, and it that's horrific. understandable, yeah. you know, and again, never feel like you need to try to mask any of these feelings yeah. and emotions, you know, it would be, it would be unreasonable mm. to expect you not to feel these emotions when telling this story. Oh, no, I know. I'm oh, totally unreasonable, <laughs> yeah, you feel it. Yeah, it's really tough. It's, fun, it's funny because like, because of TCM, I'm, when I go into the journey of TCM, it was, everything will just so make sense to the audience. Mm -hmm. Because of my journey with TCM, I'm actually able to tell my story Wow. And my brother's name is being mentioned by hundreds of people, if not wow. thousands. Wow. That wouldn't have happened if I didn't go into this journey, which I'll come to. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like so grateful for that. And I feel like he's so grateful yeah. that I found a path that enabled me to unfold my truth, because mm. ultimately truth is what matters, mm. and enabled me to reconnect to me because mm. I wasn't trying to chase the brother that was no longer here. Yeah. Because before it was like a chase, like I wanted to be near him, I wanted mm. to be with him. But yeah, the murder was horrific. It includes 22 stab wounds. Um, you know, his head was hit against the wall. Um, strangulation, um, immersed in water and stuff. It was absolutely horrible. But the main thing for me was that he was just gone and I was yeah. devastated. I think the pain from that was the worst pain. 
I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. Understandable. I mean, how does it get worse? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. How how does it even get worse? The thing that made it worse was I couldn't really talk about it. I was adopted into a new family, so therefore everything was good. It was almost like a whirlwind with the court case and everything, but we had a new mum. How, how does a, a seven-year-old get told about something like that? How, how did you get told? I don't remember being told. I, all I remember from that, that part of my life is just missing him too much. Mm. I just remember missing him. I don't remember being told. Um, but yeah, I was there at the time, but I just, I, everything was just like, I just have this sensation of noise. It's almost like absolute <clears throat> confusion and noise and like a piercing kind of ringing sound. Like that's, that's all I remember. Wow. That's all I remember. I can so hear that mm -hmm. and I can feel <coughs> that as you describe it and, and you explain it. And it <coughs> feels like that's the only reaction anyone could have yeah. at such a young age to such a, a terrible thing. Yeah, you, there's no words. No. Like, there was no words. So I kind of grew up from that point. It wasn't something anyone talked about. So it just felt like it wasn't real. Mm. And that was another really hard thing. And then I became very suicidal as a little kid. I just didn't want to be here anymore. Like What, I'd what age would you say? From the age, I, I, <laughs> I have a feeling it was like, the actual depression came on from the age of like t 10 to 11. And when did you lose your brother? When I was like nearly seven. You're seven, so it's almost like- There was this like delay, it was almost like a delayed response. Yeah, yeah. I kind of tried to fit into family life and like, mm. but e I remember every single night there was, without fail, I'd go to bed and cry. Yeah. Every single night. Wow. Up until the age of probably like 17. Wow. It was too much. Like yeah. It was like, because it was trapped, yeah. you know? It was all trapped inside. Um, but yeah. So many burdens at such a young age. It was too much. <laughs> it I was mean. too much, but I still believed I'd be okay. The only thing was my health was deteriorating. Mm, tell and me about that. Yeah, so depression, so suicide. I tried to attempt suicide at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. I'm, so, I'm so grateful that it was unsuccessful. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the life I've had is pretty incredible i mean honestly karina you <laughs> i've always known that you've had the ability to affect a lot of lives very positively yeah but this is on a whole different level to even what i expected to feel yeah and obviously i have the privilege of being able to sit opposite you in this room and hear this story mm. but even hearing it through the podcast and through the video we're creating mm -hmm. There are going to be a lot of people that are feeling a very, very strong emotional pull towards you. Mm -hmm. And what that gives you the ability to do is it gives you the ability to positively affect their lives in so many different ways just by telling your story, being true, being vulnerable. Yeah. You're going to you're going to make a big fucking splash in this I world. I hope so. <laughs> I can't swim very well, so I hope so. <laughs> you won't need to swim buoyant. because all the water will be out the pool by the time you I make your it. splash. Honestly, Corinne, I'm... Yeah. There's all sorts of emotions going on with me as yeah, you tell Yeah, it's the crazy. Story. I've, I've, it's just like I feel like a ball of emotions at the moment. But feel it. Yeah, feel I just it, like it. I know that as this this journey is unfolding, as I'm speaking, the truth of you know the reality of my life and how it was, it's kind of it just pulls everything together. It's almost like the universe. Like I think of my life a bit like you know, like when you learn about the planets in the sky and it's just like they all aligned but what keeps them up there? I just like, that's my life. It's just, things have happened and they're just there. And it's just, there's this force that just keeps me in play. Wow. And it's just like, I'm grateful for that. I don't know what it is. I look at it as God, as a higher power. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I just believe that's what it is. Sounds like destiny. Sounds like destiny. <laughs> I like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It really sounds like destiny. I can actually almost see it above your head. Yeah. The level of destiny that you have and the things that you're gonna be able to achieve. And we all have it. We all have it. That's the thing. It's about tapping into it. But mm. you don't know you're tapping into it until sometimes you need a bit of navigation. And it, that's what helps. <sighs> Karina. So at roughly the age of 10, yeah. there's this delay. You know, yeah. you lose your brother at the age of seven and there's almost like a three year shock yeah. by the sound by the sounds yeah. of it. And uh, completely understandable. Mm -hmm. You know, I can imagine 
a completely understandable level of denial, probably like yeah. sub on a subconscious level, just do anything to block that out. No I've, one's talking about it. And no one's talking no. about it. So how can you possibly release all of this stuff if you're not able to talk about it? Mm -hmm. And there's going to be this subconscious desire to protect yourself and, and, and hide it in some way. That's just our, our defense mechanism. And so then from the age of 10, you start feeling it really bad mm -hmm. and you're feeling it all the way up to the age of, you know, you're crying yourself to sleep until you're about 17. Yeah. But you try to take your own life at what age? 11. Sorry? 11. I mean, yeah. When was the last time you were in the same room as an 11 year old girl? Yeah, if, if like, if in recent times, is there a relative or is there a student or is there no. anyone you know? No. Cause I think it will really hit home just how young that is. It's really young and I'm very conscious of how young that is. Yeah. I'm really conscious. And um, yeah, I just remember, I was quite starting to get unwell. I was having issues with my bowel Mm. I mean, you're trapping emotions, you're trapping expression, you're you're push, pushing down expression, depression. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you wanting to express yourself and you can't, depression, and you're that young. There was only one way out. I just, for me, it was like, it wasn't a cry for help. It just completely made sense. Mm. This is what I need to do. Even at 11. Yeah, it, it was sense. like, this is what I need to do and I'll be with my brother. <laughs> Yeah. It was like so simple. And um, yeah, I remember write, writing a note. My mom actually found the note years later when I left home. She found the note. I was, no one she had read it before that. She didn't know. She didn't know I could, tried to commit suicide. Right. I told her uh, years and years later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember it was actually quite funny because it didn't work out. And then I would have been loads of shit because I made such a mess. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just kind of cut my wrist again. I remember just this sense of calm. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay with this. Wow. And I felt like God would be okay with it. Mm. I must have passed out. I took paracetamol, probably not enough to overdose, mm. probably enough to stop the pain. Mm, sure. <laughs> so nothing happened. Mm. Um, but when I woke up, which must have been like an hour later or so, there was just blood everywhere. My mum was calling me for dinner. I was like, <laughs> and she was downstairs, she was downstairs, you were upstairs. I'm like upstairs panicking, thinking, I'm going to get beats. I'm going to be in so much shit because there's blood everywhere. Like, yeah. So obviously, you know, I went down to dinner. That dinner table sat around like looking at my mum. And I thought to myself, how fucking selfish wow. are you being? I would have, I would have gone. My mum would have thought it was her th fault. Mm. She was the one that actually adopted me and gave me a life. Mm. How would that have been fair? I mean, what a level of conscious awareness for an 11 year old girl to have. That yeah. is quite incredible, you know, to be able to even process those kind of thoughts. And you know what? There are, of course, going to be mixed viewpoints on whether or not it was selfish. Was it not selfish? Yeah. It was how you felt at the time, you know, which yeah. means it is 100 percent valid. Yeah. But to have the conscious level of awareness for you to even think that yeah. is incredible. Yeah, I, d I don't, I remember thinking that and then going upstairs. So in my bedroom, I had like a, an area that I'd do my prayers. And I remember just crying. I processed that trauma that day. Mm -hmm. That's why it never affected me thereafter. Mm -hmm. And saying to God, I'm so sorry. I remember just asking forgi for forgiveness and I felt like I had it. Yeah. And then I just thought, I need to make something with my life. Wow. I need to do something with my life. But I was getting really unwell. Um, and that was the start of <coughs> ulcerative colitis. Wow. Yeah, so I was um, had ulcerative colitis, one of the youngest in the um, in the UK to have ulcerative colitis. And what it is that? It's it's where the bowel is like irritated, irritable bowel mm. disease, where the the bowel's inflamed. Mm. Um, but I actually had Crohn's disease. And what is Crohn's disease? Crohn's is um, inflammation of the bowel. Okay. And Crohn's can be from the mouth to the rectum area. Mm -hmm. And with me, I had it from the mouth to the rectum area. Yeah, like the heart. So it's just inflamed. Yeah, just Drink that entire journey is inflamed. Yeah, drinking water, it was awful. My whole life that, you know, was just, I couldn't eat. I was on feeding tubes. I was like, got to my worst point where I was like, I was moving a story forward a little bit. Where I was four stones. 23 years old. Mm. I'm like 45, I know I don't look it. And I'm like nine stones nearly. 
Yeah. So imagine that. That's wow. definitely something wrong there. Wow. I had to have life-saving bowel surgery, which was planned originally, mm. but I became so unwell, and that was at King's College, which it, I know we... <laughs> I remember you said the in message. a post on social media <laughs> saying, this is where you were born. I was like, that hospital saved my life. Yeah, see, so that, that's times. the message I mentioned earlier. How yeah, beautiful is that? King's College Hospital, Lambeth, where I was born, so random. was the hospital that saved your life on multiple occasions. Yeah, multiple occasions. But that was like, again, you know, it was... A life-changing moment. I went in, you know, my, my I had to say bye to my my mum. Mm. I didn't feel like I was like I'm gonna be fine. Mm. I didn't know if I was gonna be fine, but I had again this calmness, like mm. just go with it. Was there okay. was there like a warning for that? Was the were the hospital staff essentially saying say goodbyes in yeah. case this doesn't so it go was, well? Yeah, it was planned <clears> surgery, <throat> but I deteriorated so badly that I had to be taken in as an emergency. I oh. couldn't actually sit up or do anything for myself anymore. My mum was lifting me to the toilet. How old were you? Like 23. Oh, man. So, came out. I just remember seeing this big face over me and this woman saying, no, darling, you're not in heaven. I was like, fuck's sake, I'm still alive. <laughs> 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 and you know, the first thing I wanted to do, the first thing I thought of doing was, I'm going to be a personal trainer. Post-surgery. Post-surgery. Post, I'm, I'm here, I'm alive. I can't move. I can't do shit. Yeah, your Tubes body... everywhere. I'm, I can't move. Your yeah. body had deteriorated <laughs> to this point. You were like four stone, you had the surgery, and you're like, I'm going to be a PT. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> it. And while I was in hospital recovering, which was really hard, I had to learn to walk again, all that, you know, I started to learn. I started studying personal training in the hospital. <laughs> Where did that come from? I just wanted to be someone. I was mm. like, I am not, this is not going to define me. This is not going to define me. I was like, I've seen people with different disabilities and they're doing shit with their life. Mm. And Some I'm like, incredible shit. Yeah. Some incredible stuff. And I'm like, okay, bit. just my middle was missing. Yeah. Still got yeah. my limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realize how, you know, actually impactful it is when you have your bowel missing. It's quite an impact. But <sighs> I can imagine. You just I mean, think my arms and legs are working. I'm all right. No, but I mean, it's like the core, isn't it? It's it the center your of your entire body. I became a personal trainer a few years later. Wow. I studied and went, you know, continued doing my studies in management. And stuff. I was just, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. I thought I just wanted my own business in personal training, in martial arts, because I was really into martial mm. arts. Still did, am. Did your health improve from that first surgery? Because you, you yes. had a few surgeries. I had right? 36 surgeries altogether. And it was 36. Mm. And it was just like after that first one, there was yeah. a full understanding that there will just need to be more. When you have your bowel, um, when you have bowel surgery and your large bowel is removed, the complication is not in the midsection, it's in the rectum. Sure. So if the if the disease is in the rectum, what they can do is remove the rectum. Mm -hmm. But that for a young woman is actually quite devastating. Yeah. 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 Uh, mentally. Yep. So my my surgeon and my medical doctor, who's not not alive anymore, and I absolutely loved him because he always listened to me. What's his name? Dr. Forjax <laughs> from King's College Hospital. Dr. Forjax. Yeah, he's, King's a, he's such Hospital. a, you're right, he's a blessing, like proper blessing. Who delivered me at King's College Hospital? <laughs> 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 he might have helped you with the bowel <laughs> movements, but you know, but true. he always believed in me as well, you know, but it was, um, he always said, go for it. You mm. know, just go for what you want to, just, mm. you know, when you have these mm. pinnacle, these people that just show up in your life and you're like, mm. why are they there? We are changing things. Definitely. And, you know, as you say in TCM, we say like we're changing, we are changing lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this incredible career, this Fortune 500 company that, that mm -hmm. happened a few years after. I'm now 45, as I say. And relationships happened. I never had issues with relationship with my bowel and, you know, having a stoma. I've got a stoma. So yeah, tell us about what the mm. process was because you were saying about how the removal of the rectum is, like, devastating, especially for yeah. a young woman. So, but this would have been put on the table as an option. Yeah, I didn't take it. I, I was <laughs> kind of told it's not ideal. It's like a cosmetic surgery, so you have, like, they recreate that area. Okay. For, you know, at the moment, I look like as you would expect someone to look. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'd rather, I don't need the operations anymore because they now have treatment that I'm on. Wow, interesting. But they didn't have the treatment at the time. Mm. And that's why having belief and self-belief in things is such mm. a powerful thing. Totally. 
because I believed I could do what I'm doing mm. and look where I am now. I believed the treatment would, would advance. Even Dr. Forger was saying it, there's going to be so much advancement probably after I go. I'm now on something called biologics. Okay, tell us about that. The biologics basically heals <laughs> that particular part of the body. Wow. I don't know how it does it and goes to that area. It heals that area. Mm. You know, it's, it works with the proteins wow. in, in the actual white cells and it heals that area. So I've been on that treatment for six years. I've had no operations, <sighs> no operations. Modern medicine can be <coughs> incredible, yeah. can't it? Biologics. I mean, they're using it. I mean, it was originally designed for people with um, arthritis. Mm. But it just shows you can have something for something. This is what I love about the world. You can have something for something, mm. but it can be so powerful for something else. Totally. I'm with you for TCM. Yeah? Yeah. Someone could be listening because they're like how I was when yeah. I just been made redundant. And this message is going to make them know they are possible and then they're going to shoot and do something else do you know what i mean I it's just like that. everything connects to everything else totally you know and that's why we do this to send <coughs> that message out knowing that we will make that connection Absolutely. so so let's let's get to that then yeah. because you know you were in that hospital you're like i'm going to be a personal trainer you carried on having multiple surgeries you yeah. did become a personal trainer yeah. very successful one as well a very <laughs> successful one your life was unfolding in front of you yeah. in a way that i and i don't want to assume how that felt how did that feel? Like unbelievable. Mm. I was making money. I was able to pay for my own stuff. Wow. Man, I was able to like buy my own clothes for the wow. first time. Like coming from a, you know, I res and I say it respectfully because you have what you have when you're younger. Mm. You don't make a fuss about it. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of hand-me-downs. You mm -hmm. couldn't afford it, you know? Sure. I can just buy my own stuff now. And when I do buy my own stuff, I do it with gratefulness, with mm. gratitude. I just think, thank you, universe, I'm able to do this. I get excited. I open the box with new shoes or yeah. something and I, I feel good, you know? Yeah, good. Because I never had that for so many years. Mm. When I buy a gift for my my soulmate, I call her my soulmate, yeah. you know, it's just like she knows it's from a, a place of love. It doesn't love matter it. how big or small, it doesn't matter. It's a sentiment that matters. So it was an incredible feeling. But I now have my own business. <laughs> And, and let's get to that yeah. because when at the start of this episode, when I asked you, you know, let's go to the beginning and you went to that place. <coughs> I went to the beginning. And, uh, uh, I yeah. went to birth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what we want to hear yeah. because what a story, what a journey. And the first time I asked you when you went to redundancy. Yeah. So take us to that point. Yeah. So if, if the listeners remember back, you know, I was in that devastated state. Coaching masters gave them a call. I didn't know who you were. Mm. But I researched the shit out of you. <laughs> Had you gone from personal training to doing something else then? I went from personal training, was living in London, like Wandsworth area, mm. really reputable gym, mainstream mm -hmm. gym. Mm -hmm. Moved to Brighton, fell in love, moved to Brighton, not with that person anymore. Yep. Bought a house in Brighton, but it meant I needed to restart my career. Mm. I couldn't start as a personal trainer. Mm. Went into leadership. Mm. Well, I was on the phones first, done phones, like doing phone calls. Yeah. It was so boring. But I smashed it. I was able to make money really easily. The place I wanted to work was that fortune. Mm. That's what I had in my head. I was mm. like, I am going to go there. They had the old school American building. Yeah. I imagine myself walking up the stairs and going into that building. Yeah. I wanted to work there and I would have worked there proudly. I remember thinking to myself, that's the job I'm going to get. Mm. And I got it. <laughs> I got the job. I love you, Karina. You <laughs> I just are just got it. fucking awesome. And I was here. like, I'm going to move my way up. Started on the phones, moved my way up. Yeah. You know, yeah, ended yeah. up leaving there when I left the company. I'd launched a, a network called the Asian Network. Mm. You know, I'd done really important stuff, done massive work with the Disability Network mm. and other, you know, disability stuff and also neurodiversity and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, I was a pinnacle part of that company and I love felt it. happy about that. Wow. Uh, but I made a difference with the staff. Like the staff there that were in my team still message me today. They still call me boss even I'm not working <laughs> with them. <laughs> and this is the company that you got made redundant. For. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and I'm crazy. so glad we got that context because of course, you know, redundancy is going to be tough for most people on, on yeah. most levels. But it's great to get the context as to what a difference yeah. you were making there. Because what, what I get from you, Karina, mm. is that it's important for you to make a difference. Yeah in people's lives and you were in a place where you were making a difference. Massively. And it was taken away. 
yeah, that was really, <laughs> really hard because I kind of knew it was going to be me. Mm. But probably because of my own unconscious bias, because the unconscious bias that existed in yeah. the workplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean that was the reason. Business is about strategy, mm. you know? And it's really important to understand that mm. a business will let go of people because of financial strategy. Yeah. And it's not personal. Sure. It felt personal. It's not personal. Sure. And I had to draw that line in the sand pretty quickly so I didn't mm. get depressed. Mm. I had to say to myself, you've done what you could, you made a difference, you changed your lives. My brother, my partner said to me, what do you want to do? Because they could see me sinking. I was like, I what just... A, what a question. What a coaching question. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> Guess you what know? my answer was? <laughs> so, I just want to be a coach. That was my answer. <laughs> because in that company that I was working yeah. for, the coaching was a thing that was making me stand out from everyone else. You're a natural born coach as well. So I'm I glad like I am. that just instinct, yeah. intuition, whatever it was, just that des it was destiny. It was destiny. And they said, go for it. I used the redundancy money. I reinvested myself mm -hmm. through TCM. <laughs> I bought both courses. They didn't need to sell. I yeah. said to them, you don't need to sell. <laughs> I bought both courses, accreditation, everyone do it. <laughs> Ultimate launch, everyone do it. Accreditation, you learn how to coach. You understand the coaching at like everything that you need to know around coaching yeah and so, so to be clear you're talking about the coaching masters accreditation program the 12 -week program. just just before we get to that yes. point right to, let's go back to the point where you i'm so excited to talk yeah. about it i don't even want to go back you know like, and we're gonna and we'll dive in like 100 percent. Right <laughs> this is karina speak and uh you but there was a moment where after having been made redundant mm. you know that was a tough time it was but horrible. you but how did you how did you discover the coaching masters that night in utter despair listening to you and <laughs> yeah you know, falling asleep to your voice we woke go. up the next day researched the shit out of you both and I was like, okay. So when I research, and this is something that you do as a coach for your own business, yeah. you do your research on the people, but you have to look at the comments that other people are saying about those people. Yep. And that's really important when you're trying to find your niche and stuff like that. Yep. I done all that, like hours of it. I was like, like coffee. <laughs> Karina focus. I was so focused. I mean, we've all heard what yeah. happens when Karina gets focused. I was so, so, I was like, I'm going to work with these guys. See, that's the other thing. I felt like I was working with mm. not doing a course yeah. because that's what you guys created, the community feel. Mm. It felt like you're a partner. It didn't feel like you're a student, mm. but you are a student. Yeah. And it felt like that martial art feeling with a grandmaster and a student. That's how I felt. I love that. I so, love that. Yeah. I know, but thank you. I feel very yeah, complimented. <laughs> I've never been called a grandmaster before. <laughs> NLP master maybe, but grandmaster. This is a whole new level. So you, you would have joined the membership and then you were consuming yes. that content and you were watching that video. But then there came a point where you were like, I want to take this seriously. I want to become qualified. Well, that happened really credited. quick, by the way. And I can imagine with you. <laughs> I was, was like, like I'm not Because you're wasting. an action taker. I'm an action taker. I wasn't going to waste any time. If there's an opportunity for me to be a coach, but I, from my point of view, the accreditation meant that I can confirm the fact I am a coach. I am as good as I think I am. And I wanted to confirm that. When the redundancy happened, the job title changed to coach. We had to reapply for our job as a coach. I was unsuccessful. It made me feel like I wasn't valued mm -hmm. as a coach. I needed to restore that value in myself. Mm -hmm. So I went for the accreditation, but I knew also it would give me a level, the accreditation level, that will let my audience know, however the hell the business was going to be formed, let the audience know, I am a coach, I'm serious about what I'm doing, and I've got a background with whatever. I didn't know how the business was going to be made. Sure. Hence buy an ultimate launch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't have one without the ever. I need to know exactly. Mm -hmm. And ultimate launch is another one of the other um, courses that you offer that enables you to go from niche to actual launch. That's totally. the way I look at it. And it's, I'm so glad you said that as well, because the way that I view it is I've always viewed it as part A and part B. Yeah. You know, part A, the accreditation is knowing how to coach. Yeah. And then part B is knowing how to get the clients and build the business because yeah. you can be, be the best coach in the world. But if you don't have any clients and you're not building the business, you're not changing any lives and it exactly. will just, it will, it will die a, a sad death, yeah. which is a real shame because there are a lot of very, good coaches out there that don't have the part b yeah but you were like nah 
I'm getting part A and part B. And I just I'm reinvested that, that money that I got from redundancy. I'm re reinvesting myself. I bought myself a laptop. Mm -hmm. I bought myself, I was like, I'm going to have a podcast. I bought myself the stuff. So I had the infrastructure. Mm. So whether or not I found another job, mm. whether or not I was successful or not successful, I could only see myself as successful. Yeah. I've got the infrastructure to always come back to it. I was mm. like, I'm going to make sure I've created something that I can always come back to. And that was like me safeguarding myself. Yeah. What does what does the coaching masters mean to you? For me, the coaching masters is truth. Yeah, a sense of belonging, and tr belonging and truth. Like, there's not even a, an explanation for truth because it is what it is. Mm. You know, I was able to actually tell my story in a way that I've been in the media, I've been in magazines. You know, and this is like, oh, it's not about being famous or anything like that. It's about telling my story because i know there's thousands of women people adults out there that have been through what i've been through but still feel how i used to feel up until mm. a couple of years ago before mm. i'd done all the therapy mm. before I, you know fully went full charge into becoming i see myself as an advanced coach before going into that yeah we don't need to be stuck you know we can process the trauma we need to know how and that takes me into like the, the niche that i work with tell me about that so, <clears throat> but you asked me specifically, what well, did you ask me about? What does the coaching masters mean to you? Yeah, as I say that they mean truth, a sense of belonging it means you can be who you want to be yeah. and you have the backing. That's who the coaching masters mean to me. They're like the, the strongest mentor that you could ever have. They're like grandmasters. <laughs> That's what I would say. And everyone knows that I'm like into my martial arts. I say that with the highest respect. I love I've that. not had one conversation that's been negative with you guys. Love it. And I, like, there's certain members of staff, like Bonnie, I know she, she's director of uh, Thingy now. Yeah. Massive fan of her. Yeah. Love her story. Yeah. Love how she's unfolded to the person she is now. Yeah. Obviously, the, the, both of you CEOs, there was up like Zarina, there was yep. Dina there before. All these, all these members of staff mm. that have their own story and they just stood in their truth yeah. And they made shit happen. Totally. Yeah. We've we've constructed it like that very specifically. You know, yeah. if somebody is a part of the coaching masters, they have turned their adversity into an asset. Yes. They've overcome and they have a firm focus on adding value to other people's lives. Absolutely. That's the mold. You know, that's the makeup. Yeah. And there have been people that have not fit the mold and then it doesn't work out because yeah. the mold is very specific, you know, and now we have a collection of individuals yeah. who fit that mold perfectly and there will be more that yes, come definitely. over the years, you know, and arrive over the years. So Karina, yeah, t tell me about, tell, let's, let's continue the story, right? So mm -hmm. for instance, like the money that you got from redundancy, you were like, I'm going to reinvest in myself. Mm -hmm. You did the 12 week accreditation course. You did the ultimate launch course. You bought the setup for the podcast. You got the laptop. You were like, I'm throwing myself this. into it. I'm going to do this. Yeah. What happens from that point? Check this out. A little bit of the story I didn't mention. In lockdown, I studied the freaking stuff I'm using now for coaching. I studied the NLP. I, this was before coaching. I knew about coaching masters. Yeah. I studied REBT, mm -hmm. rational motive behavior. I studied um, memory recall. I st like studied the brain. Neuroscience of the brain. I've done all of this stuff because I had time in lockdown. Mm. Destiny, you mentioned earlier. Yeah. I was meant to be on this path. I believe it. Totally. Done the accreditation, started to build my confidence. And I was like, I'm going to coach before I went into like empowerment because I really wanted to coach around enabling people, adults that have been through trauma to process the trauma, but I needed to understand how I could do it in a way that's marketable. Mm. I've definitely got that now. Yeah, <laughs> you do. And it's still unfolding. It's still, you know, I'm still working around it. It's evolving, it's growing. You it's know. evolving, it's growing. And it always will. And I love that. That's the thing about coaching. It's like martial arts. You never stop learning. No. You can never fail. You're always learning. I mm. love that philosophy. So now I'm work I work specifically with desensitizing unwanted emotions from distressing memories. Cool. It's very, very specific. Love that level <laughs> of specificity. Yeah. Love it. Because as we know, that's the power of the niche. It's the to power be of the niche. known as the 
go-to person for this specific group of people who are experiencing this specific thing yeah. to help them achieve this specific outcome. You, you've, and, and based on your, your story, your past, the things you've experienced, you're combining coaching tools and techniques and methods yeah. that you've learned with the experience of your life thus far. Just Karina, it's, you got it, you're honestly, nailing it. It's like mind blowing. I worked so hard because of the community, I was able to practice with over 70 people mm. before I launched my product. Wow. My product's called Unchained Memories. <laughs> wow. And I basically unchain freaking memories, unwanted wow. memories. Like I'm able to do memory alteration, which is not specifically coaching. There's an element of hypnosis in that, mm -hmm. but it's deep state hypnosis. And we go into memories and sometimes there's some horrible, horrible stuff that has happened to people and we're able to take the power away from that memory. Yeah. That's where the alteration is. It's not, you don't alter the past because it's something that's happened. It means when you go back to the memory, you do EMDR, bilateral stimulation, mm. which is eye movements, mm. certain eye movements, you desensitize the impact that trauma had wow. on the brain that you were unable to process, which is why it comes back in the form of anxiety, flashbacks, which is something I struggled with, yeah. intrusive thoughts, why? Why do you deserve any of that mm. when you've survived? Because we we are survi in survival mode for a certain amount of time. Then we become heroes. Mm. That's what I like to say. Yeah. We don't stay survivors. We become heroes. We become giants. <laughs> and yeah. Something I said in a book that I was writing, we leave, we will leave giant footprints in the sand wow. because we, we were here. <clears throat> we were not given necessarily the best start in life, but we grew big. Yeah. so big that the world could not miss us. That's, that's just me in a nutshell on the work that I, I do. I love that <laughs> so much. You know, there are going to be so many people that are one, inspired by this. Mm. And secondly, there are going to be a lot of people that think that's me. You know, I'm experiencing those elements of flashbacks, elements of trauma, yeah. the memories that are holding me back that need to be unchained. You know, there will be a lot of people experiencing mm. that because we don't know people's story. No. You know, and I think that is just one of the biggest takeaways that everybody really needs to process because we're so quick to judge. The judgment is just everywhere. And Shocking. It's, I always say, just take a breath, you know? Yeah. Like you see an, an article, you see something you don't agree with, it's just take a breath. There's certain celebrities recently, I won't say the names, everyone's gonna know what I'm referring to. Yeah. They say shit because they saw something mm -hmm. and they think it's okay to say this shit. Yeah. It's not okay. No. Take a breath. Decide what you really want to say. Take a breath, step back, step back. reevaluate, and just have a firm understanding that you have no idea what is going on in that person's life. Exactly. One, because you've never asked. And secondly, even if you did ask and they were to tell you, inevitably you still wouldn't get the full picture. Exactly. Because it's impossible to, to relay the full picture, even when we try by storytelling. And, you know, our, our language is limited compared to what's going on in our internal world. We can never really give the full picture. Picture. Yeah. I understand that everybody's processing information in a completely different way. Exactly. It's so just give people just have fucking some break. Compassion. <laughs> yeah. Have some compassion. Like, you know, reconnect to yourself and have some love for people. Have some There's love. There's so much like I wouldn't say so much negativity. I believe that the good is better than the bad. It's mm. stronger than the bad. I strongly believe that. Yeah, There's yeah. more good in the world than bad because we want good. Yeah. <clears throat> we we might make people make choices to do bad. Mm but it's because they probably want something good, but you don't need to do it that way. Where do you think, or let me ask it in this way, where you are right now mm -hmm. with your coaching business, how much and on, on what level has the coaching masters contributed towards that? I'll say like 90%. Wow. 90%. Wow. So you can have a vision, you can have a dream, yeah? yeah? You can really believe in yourself, but you have to take action to make it work. But if you take action, but it's not navigated in the way that's needed for success, mm. you're kind of stuck, mm. yeah? So I needed direction. I invested for a kind of like a mentorship. I invested, although it was courses, in my head, I was like, you know what? I know I can reach out anytime. I know I can ask things in the community. It made the perspective bigger. Yeah. And I knew if everyone saw that I was serious, like you guys could see, I'm a serious player here. I knew that I'd get the navigation that I needed. Mm. So you had me, 
like the student that's willing and ready to do everything but needed direction mm. i'd say 90 percent. wow incredible that doesn't de devalue what i had no but 90 percent in regards to how much did you know the tcm kind of make me i'll say 90 percent made made it happen and that's the thing and you know without you without you doing it none of it would happen anyway it's yeah. not like but anything you, you kind of need done the navigation you. you look you need you need the mentorship you know you, you need be, the navigation yeah. yeah you need the mentorship i needed it and and none of yeah. it was done for you you did all of it it's just that we were there to present the information and we were there to to, yeah. to give the guidance but you you took that and you you ran with it you know Absolutely. you took the path the thing is that's really good is like what, what i'm because i've been around coaching for a long time mm. you know in, in more in the corporate world the advancement that TCM are making, you know, this new investment to have, have it in a virtual reality. This is stuff like mm. I've got ADHD and dis I'm dyslexic as well. And it's like, this is the kind of stuff that shakes the world. This is the stuff that makes a difference and enables so much more of that crowd of that population of the world mm. to do stuff, to do yeah. something like this. Yeah. You know, the, the advancement, like the way that Lewis does the videos, the way that you, I always say Lewis has got like this. I see you as the high motivational, obviously your massive business, yeah. But this is how I see. Yeah, it. yeah, go for it. High impact motivational. What you say on the jar is basically what you get. This is what you're gonna get. You say this is what I'm gonna do, and this is what you get. And then with Lewis, it's kind of like the money man, yeah. yeah. But like that doesn't mean you're not. But sure. the way it kind of makes it come together, the way I see it, he streamlines. The way that he's doing like the YouTube video is so streamlined that you literally don't need to ch look at another video. Yeah. When you combine the two of you together with the other team, the rest of the team, yeah, the impact is phenomenal. Mm. Because I can just go and like watch a YouTube video. Like if anyone can check out a recent YouTube video, but either of you, you don't need to go anywhere else. Whereas usually you check something out, you need to research something else and watch another one and watch, you don't need to do that with TCM. I love that. It's so streamlined and yeah. it's got so much power and impact. You just got everything you need in one place. And that is so spot on because, you know, this is what we've said for a long time, the yeah. world's first total solution for coaching, yeah. where there is no reason to go anywhere, anywhere else. Everything is contained within the artificial intelligence, the virtual reality, the app, the courses, the membership, the community. Everything that we've built mm -hmm. has been built to, to con to contain all of that information that anybody would ever need in the coaching space. They don't need to go anywhere else. Yeah. So you've just you've hit the nail on the head. If that's what you've received, yeah, that's from this, what I've received. That's what the company doing. I worked with before. <coughs> they had something called a closed loop system. Okay, that's within okay. the financial sorry the financial industry. Yeah, everything they'd done was in house. To find that in a freaking coaching light, I was like, this is basically what you guys have done. Mm. That's a Fortune 500 for financial a financial institution. You've done that in the coaching industry, and for yeah. me, I was like. Bloody hell, this is like, this is absolutely incredible. If I was to say, big up the coaching masters <laughs> as much as possible to someone that just has, like, is listening to this for the first time ever. They don't even yeah. know who we are or what we do. But their one and only impression of TCM <clears throat> is whatever you're about to say about it. Mm. What, what do you say? I'll say that anyone that uses the word masters in their work, I'm not gonna use it lightly. If you say you're a master, you've got mastery in something, you're gonna say it because it's real. If you're gonna stand up and say, we are going to be, or we are the leading, you're not gonna say it unless you know it's real. So if there's anyone listening, those of you that are listening, if you know that you want to change your lives and you want a part, a career path in coaching, or you want to be Inter you want to interact in coaching in some way, reach out to the coaching masters. And this is not just like advocacy. This is me, I'm just going to be real. You know, be if real. I felt differently, <clears throat> I'd, 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 I would just be honest. I think we, uh, up until this yeah. point in the podcast, one thing that we know about you, Karina, is that you're real. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it as it is. It will change your life. because you, It's literally yeah. like this road <laughs> that is just like, actually, I mean, I'll take you back to space. It's like space, you don't know what you're gonna see. You might see an alien, probably not, but you'll definitely see a satellite, you'll definitely see the planets, you'll definitely see the stars, you'll definitely see the moon. But you're gonna uncover something up there within, within you, because I'm speaking metaphorically, that you've never knew that was there. And when you find that thing in you and it opens up, 
it's going to be one of the most powerful life-changing things you've ever experienced. And you will experience it in different parts of your life in different ways, like when you fall in love, da, da, da. But if you're able to create a platform yourself because you've been supported in how to and create a business where you're changing lives of others, it's a no-brainer. You've got it in you. You just need to do that first step. I definitely done that first step. And it doesn't matter the circumstance. You don't have to not work and do this. You don't need to drop anything. You can do it as well as, you know, there's parents, there's people with um, like neurodiversity, you know, I've got disability, like everyone's accepted. There's no isms like racism, sexism. There's no isms, that's what I call it. Everyone's just accepted. It's a family feel mm. that you walk into. Yeah. But you walk out with a business. If you put that hard work in, if you put that dedication, you walk out, you'll have a successful business, but you'll always have those mentors to lean back on. You'll always have something you can invest in because investing in yourself is really, really important. You're proof of that. I am proof of it. And this is why we're here. Beautiful, like beautifully said, beautifully articulated, and it really does capture the sense of who we are and, yeah. and, and what we do. Fuckisms. <laughs> Fuckisms. fuckisms. <laughs> Completely fuck. There's not been any other company where I haven't experienced isms. I fuck fuckisms. <laughs> like I can tell you as the leader of this company right now, yeah. fuckisms and they're yeah. never gonna be there. You know, this is I I, I did it I, I had an audition recently for a TV show. Did you? Yeah, and it was, uh, and I, I won't like share the too much detail just in case I'm not allowed, right? But um, yeah, basically they, they brought an idea to me and they were like, look, we've got this idea for this show. It's about you being in a house of um, these individuals yeah. and everyone is like um, going through a kind of hardcore interview process okay. for, for a really high level, high paid job. And they were like, it's actually, you're actually the boss. So this is actually an interview process to get a high paid job at the coaching masters, but they don't know that you're the, the boss, boss, right? Okay. And they don't know what the company is, blah, blah, blah. You're just going to be one of them. And they were like, your tattoo then, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, look, they have no, they don't know who the company is. They don't know who you are. You're just going to be another person who's going through this interview process. And then they said to me, would you like be put off by hiring someone if they were getting like blackout drunk or something at a party and blah, 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 blah. And I said, I am not concerned mm. with the person who's getting blackout drunk. I'm concerned with the person who's being rude to the waiter. Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the isms. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, I know people who are absolutely world class at what they do. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic people. They go and get blackout drunk at the weekend yeah. and they do their job. I don't even, as long as yeah. they're safe. That's their personal time. As long as they're safe. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. no isms involved with that. Yeah. You know, they're not hurting anyone. They're having fun. I don't give a shit. But what I look for is I look for those underlying isms and I yeah. look for the the rudeness that really is kind of the start of something like that. Yeah. And I, I've got a firm belief and that belief is, is that I believe in expression yeah. over repression. Yeah. I think as human beings, we are built and designed to express, yeah. express the way we feel, express love, express gratitude. Absolutely. Expression is breath mm -hmm. and it's expansion. Repression and this is repressing another person for their yeah. sexuality, for their race, for their gender, for their age. It's repression such as depression, such as compression. Yeah. It will never be good for the human experience. No. How the fuck can people not get it? It's so- It baffles you, me still. It baffles me. All you need to look at is basic physics. Just look at basic yeah. physics. You know, we are not, designed to be compressed, depressed, repressed to any extent, because it's not gonna be good for our, our mind, our body, our soul, but expression on the other hand is a release and it will always be a release. So I love what you were saying there about the coaching masters yeah. is clearly a place in which there are no isms. Yeah. And it's been built upon that belief that I've yeah. got. I, I absolutely, I've got so much I could say around that, but thank you for saying it like that. Thank you, because it's like, it's such a, an easy thing for people to miss mm. because there is so much of that isms. That's, we just call it that for the moment. That's happening in the world today, but it doesn't need to happen. And in, if we've got communities of how many thousand, you know the numbers, don't you? There's, there's, there's 4,000 
paying members inside of a private Facebook community currently 4,000. Think, Think about that. And there have been thousands of members over the years because, you know, people have, have come and gone. They've moved on to their own yeah. thing. And, and also as well, um, thousands of courses sold. Yeah. You know, thousands. I think it's over 3,000 courses sold of people that are it's like, crazy. I want to become a coach. Yeah. And they've gone on and they've built their businesses. That's, that's That section of the world, of people in the world, are being influenced positively, mm. are getting an opportunity to do something they love and believe in. Yeah. What you just said about expression and repression, it totally backs what I said when I was a kid. Yeah. I've been allowed to express myself now mm. in a community where I feel like I belong, I feel safe and regulated and connected. Mm. I don't need anything else. No. I'm at home and I'm content. I've got no chase in my head anymore. It's gone because I'm doing what I love. But I also know there's so much more to come mm. and I'm enjoying that. Mm. Every single day, I'm enjoying it, and every single day, like I've, like when something comes, pops up a TT, I'm like, oh, what are they up yeah, to now? What's yeah, this? Yeah. Oh, what's that? You know, I love that. You're it's always true. there. Yeah, I'm I never, there. I never change that. Like, are you? I mean, look at you're here. I'm you're here. <laughs> you are a significant part of this journey. Yeah. You really are. What What would you say you're most grateful for in relation to the coaching masters and your coaching journey and what you've built so far? What What are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for having a business. I think on the more of um emotional level i'm really grateful for um ha for having the ability to express myself to be able to say my brother's name and him being heard like i feel heard you know and that wouldn't have happened with any other company i know that as fact because they don't work in the same way they're probably doing really good stuff but they're not changing lives in the same way i feel like i can say that mm. honestly i'm grateful that there's a few things I'm grateful for, not just one. I'm grateful that I've got two people that back me a thousand percent. My partner, my brother backs me a hundred percent. They believe that I can do so much. Like my partner was messaging me today saying, this train's canceled, that train's canceled. <laughs> and like, it's just this really beautiful got message. got you here. Yeah, this beautiful <clears throat> message of like, how much she loves and believes in me. And you know, I'm just mm. like, I'm grateful for that. Mm. You know, you've got your little family unit, you're grateful for it, right? hundred percent. And for TCM, like for me coming across, for the universe allowing me to come across TCM at a time mm. when I was in a pretty bad state mental health wise, yeah. to now be where I am now, where I feel incredible. Like I can't wait for 2023. Like I, I enjoy growing up right now, but yeah. like, I absolutely enjoy it. Every year I look forward to the next year. Definitely. When I was younger, I didn't want, I wanted the world to kind of stop. <laughs> and I'm so glad you said growing up as well, because so many people would view it as get growing older, but we're growing up. I say growing up. Because we're going that way. I look good. You look fucking <laughs> look good. Great. Did you think you're 45? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Karina, like a shit. So we I'm, look right. I'm, I'm 33 years old. Like we 100% could be in the I same year at school. Yeah. <laughs> November 89, yeah. King's College Hospital. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I want to touch on something you said a minute ago. So I think this is really very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that is that the, di discovering coaching mm -hmm. at a time in which you are personally struggling mm -hmm. is the best time to discover it. Absolutely. I don't get Crazy. this this mindset because, yeah. like, for instance, people seem to have this viewpoint that you needed to have overcome the struggles and you needed to have already started to move within a, a world of success and yeah. fulfillment and happiness. And then you can start the journey of becoming a coach. At that point, why? What's yeah. the point? Like you start the journey because, and I think most people would recognize this, yeah. you first embark upon this journey because you recognize the self-development nature of the journey, yeah. how it Absolutely. can help you develop as an individual because you find yourself struggling in a tough place or in a dark place and you embark upon this journey and you think, fuck, I could get a lot from this personally. Yeah. And then you start getting to the point where you're like, now I want to give it to other people. Yeah. You know, and you are just a beautiful example of that. You know, you found the coaching masters at a time yeah. where you were going through a tough time. I was going through a massively tough time. I was going to touch now. on that. If everyone rewinds back to my, you know, my whole journey that I've gone through, if I waited mm. for anything, I would not be alive today. <sighs> if I sat and waited and believed that my mum was not going to harm me and believed that this was going to, you know, and just like didn't do anything about I put things in place. I had the strong belief as a child, but I put things in place. I had my own little strategy. When this happens, then I can do that. If I do that, I can then get food. Yeah. I didn't wait for it. No. I made it happen. I made, mm. made sure I created a path for myself. Mm. 
And with the coaching, I've done the same. Like, and I say that to my clients. That's one of the first things I'll come back. I'll, I'll message you back when I'm okay. Mm. Why? I just yeah. send why. <laughs> why? Because then what's why? the point? What's the point? Why are you going to message me back when you're you're not okay and you can't be okay on your own? That's the point. You don't, we don't message. say that to clients. Yeah. But the reality is, because I've been there, you're not going to be okay. You're going to get through it. Maybe there's going to be uh, excessive behaviors that might happen to mm. get yourself over that threshold. Mm. And then you fall back into it. Totally. Because your brain needs to change, yeah. you know? And that's why NLP, things like uh, neuro linguistic programming, NLP is so powerful, which yeah. is something you're really established in. You know, I use that and combine it with EMDR, with the bilateral stimulation. What a combination. It's a massive combination. And I'm able to, within an eight week period, and it's so powerful by, by the second session, by the third hour, yeah. it's crazy. The brain is desensitized from the horrible shit. Mm. Totally. Then you can say, yeah, I can do stuff now, you mm. know? It, it's not even the investment. People look at the money side. That's the other thing with the coaching. Like, people think, oh, it's too much money. Is it? You know, is it too much money or is that an excuse? Mm. What would what would I pay for my freedom yeah. for me to have what I really want in life? Totally. And to be free yeah. of those and to be un, to unchain those memories. Exactly. What would you pay? I mean, if... Why would you want to live in flashbacks where you just constantly just suicidal thoughts are like why you why? don't deserve it and you don't, you don't need to yeah. you know if you if someone was to put a physical chain around your ankles yeah and one of those big cartoon like <laughs> weights yeah. how much money would you be willing to spend to be rid of that after carrying that around for That's a crazy. day yeah yet you're carrying around that same chain sometimes worse those chained yeah. memories that are internal affecting the mind and it's like that formula that i'm always talking about yeah. right that your thoughts create I your feelings this. your feelings you've got to end with this i love it and your actions create your results it's i remember just... the first time you said that i played it again i was like <laughs> i need to remember it i just couldn't bloody remember it it's just this like solid four-step process that is happening on a continuous yes. basis right your thoughts create your feelings your feelings create your actions and your actions create your results and at the end of the day, what you're doing with people is you're helping them develop more effective thoughts. Absolutely. And thoughts that are empowering and re the removal yeah. of disempowering thoughts that yeah. have chained their, their legs together and have stopped them from moving forward. And it's all to do with like the science of rage, just the way the science works. I'm a massive fan of martial arts, as I've mentioned before. There's something that Bruce Lee used to do when he's fighting. He'll break the rhythm. Yeah, I love using uh, like the the ideas or metaphors from martial arts. Love that. He'll be doing a certain movement, bam! He'll break the rhythm. Mm. We need to break the rhythm in the in the brain, but we yeah. do it through the neuro pathways. That's more yeah. the science side of it. When you're doing advanced NLP, it's something that you do. You're changing that thought process. When you're doing the line of work that I do, we're changing the pathway. That it's almost like when you got a a path when you're going up a hill, you see loads of people walk up the same path, but yeah. then there's a lighter path or somewhere other people. We want to make that lighter path stronger. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. your brain goes back to the positive. Now I have flashbacks of good stuff. Wow. You know what I mean? Before I had flashbacks of horrible stuff. That just, you, you've just given me a huge epiphany there because I can imagine it's similar to most of our listeners. Yeah. You I, you. Because the word flashback yeah. is so heavily integrated with negative flashbacks, yeah. I've never even thought about being able to have a positive it's flashback. A, it's a positive thing. Yeah. What a powerful thing yeah. to be able to achieve once and create. You change it, once you change it, you have positive flashbacks. Like a flashback or out of nowhere, the best memory, the yeah. greatest feeling, putting you in the most effective state. I was coming here today, I had so many flashbacks from when I was younger. There's a certain chip shop I used to go, it's still under the bridge, but they called it something else. I just had this flashback. Then I remember this this gig that I went to. It's like all these, po whereas before, yeah, my brain would not have positive flashbacks. We can change the brain. We can, we're changing lives. We effectively mm -hmm. are changing lives. It's a no brainer. People that are listening. And what have I get always said? Oh, 100%, <laughs> get, involved. get involved. You're still listening to the Coaching Masters podcast <laughs> and you've not joined the Coaching Masters membership at just least. I yeah. mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. Minimal. It's like $9 yeah. a month, like, men, like just, just do let's just there's so no much brain. value i can't even it's crazy i still go on to the membership to double check things yeah of course because and that's another thing that lewis was talking about today whatever the date is today but he was talking specifically about um i was listening to something he was talking about um going back to the basics you know doing the basic mm. things and he talks about the six a's 
Yeah. 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 I was listening to that today. I don't know why. I was something I wanted to get some ideas for my something that I'm working mm. on. Um, and I just thought it's so true. And it will it, never die. It's, it it's, never it's dies. pure value. Yeah. You know, it's just the way that it Even works. Even in sports, that you know, we always go back to basics. Of course, martial the fundamentals. arts you go back to basics, fundamentals. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just like probably TCN's biggest cheerleader, <laughs> big time. I love like that. I like I would advocate this all you know TCM all the time. I believe in everything that you guys believe in because I'm part of that. I yeah. see myself in partnership, you know, I'm part totally, of that journey, you know? you know, and, and, and the thing is, you're a great example for that as well, because you've taken what we've taught mm -hmm. and you've constructed it in such a way that you are now adding value to other people's lives. Absolutely, and that's yeah. the whole point. The whole point is that it is this ripple effect that we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. And again, what is that thing I'm always saying? The more value you add to someone else's life, the more money you make. Now, absolutely. It's not that it's all about money but for me money is a, a representation of the amount of value that has been added yeah. and i love money because love money. little freedom tokens right yeah, you know exactly. the more of those little freedom tokens i've got i'll give you a great example posy my daughter two years old she was she wasn't very well right a couple yeah. of weeks ago and my wife claudia was on the phone to the the gp really frustrated and was like oh i can't get through you know and every time i do get through they don't have an appointment blah, 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 blah. and i was like how much for like just a private doctor's mm -hmm. appointment it was like 60 quid right i was like yeah. why are you on the phone like yeah. trying trying to make that happen mm. because i have a level of appreciation that when i was a postman making 267 yeah, pounds yeah. a week, yeah, yeah. that 60 quid would have been considerably harder to have spent to the point where it probably would have been, I'd do anything for my daughter, but it yeah. would have been much harder to have spent. Now I've got 60 of those little freedom tokens yeah. because I've added value to people's lives and received them. I can take those 60 freedom tokens and, and the level of freedom it gives us in that moment is we don't have to wait. Yeah. I can go and book that appointment. I can have a see a doctor by nine o'clock in the morning yeah, and they absolutely. will be attentive because yeah. I've paid for that hour or that 30 minutes yeah. or whatever. So that's why money's important, right? Because absolutely. we have that freedom. You're adding value to people's lives yeah. through your coaching. And the more value you add to other people's lives, the more money you make. And absolutely. I am so blessed to hear mm. that you are in a position where you're able to add this value to people's lives because of the the study that yeah. you've done at the coaching masters and the things that you've Absolutely. learned. Absolutely, I've I've made sure that I've created something that is different. Mm -hmm. I've made sure I put my stamp on it. The the level of work that I do with clients and it's kind of like mid range. Like my courses are like mid range. I see them as high ticket. For me, it feels like a high ticket mm -hmm. because the change is phenomenal. Yeah, you know to 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 know that someone's gonna walk away and they are no longer gonna, so this shit doesn't come back. The way that I work with the brain, it doesn't come back, it goes and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Because bilateral simulation, you're engaging a different part of the brain that's not normally engaged. Yeah, you broke the chain. You broke the chain, yeah. you've unchained the memories, mm. literally. So I know what I've got now is so niche down and so powerful, I know that I can charge what I charge mm. and I feel very comfortable charging yeah, what I charge and yeah. damn right you know because at the end of the day it's hugely mm. valuable I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to put something out there right now <laughs> and I'm so I'm gonna be so proud to watch this okay. back you know where however long this takes who knows right <laughs> but I'm gonna put this out there right now that you Karina yeah. there will be a point in which you have a huge following there will be a point in which you are speaking on multiple stages across the world. I want to do that, by the way. That's my vision. You should do that. Yeah. You should be gunning for it. You know the vision that you've always kept, even yeah. as a little girl when yeah. you were seven years old and you had a vision, I'm going to have an, a mum at some yeah. point. I'm not always going to be in this place of pain. There will be a moment where I'm happy. There will be, And you've always been able to do it. You've yeah. always been able to keep that vision in your sights. Even this, right? <laughs> when I, I, I uploaded a story on my Instagram of showing people this studio for the first time and you were like, I can really see myself in that, in that I studio. I literally visualised myself. I was like, I can see myself in there. I'm going to be in there. Yeah. And like within two days, was it? A couple of days? That's it. Now you're I, here. I was like, thank you, universe. <laughs> <laughs> my, my other half was like, bloody hell. <laughs> she heard me say it. I was like, I'm going to go there. Wow. She heard me say it. See, that's the thing. You yeah. were brave enough to vocalize it and you put it out there and you allowed someone else to hear it. And that makes it even you gotta stronger. you got to express yourself, people. you got to express yourself. Yeah. Expression over repression. 
But I'm putting this out there because you will be speaking on stages across the world. You will have a huge following. You, this might not be the most significant thing, but you're. I see that it's little blue tick. For me. That little blue tick is next to your name, yeah. no doubt, because you are you are a big player in this space, like big player pending That's in the coaching I feel like space. It. I feel like it. I can see it, and I, I want to have the journey with TCM there. Like I've gone, I'm gonna have my own. I'll be my own entity, but like never forget where you come from. Yeah, totally. Never forget. Allow me to introduce <laughs> you on stage when you're on the biggest stage. Oh, in the hell world. yeah. You will be introducing <laughs> me. I'll be joining you one of your shows. I'm sure you've got a big one coming up at some point. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Of course, it's the coach. You've still got Masters, to meet right? Lewis, isn't it? Yeah, and you've not met Lewis in person yet. No, of course. And apparently, he's tall. He's very tall. Yeah. I must admit, you and know. Apparently, he can sing. I've heard him singing. He's a good singer. Yeah, he's a yeah. good performer. But I was very complimented when you met me for the first time today, and you were like, oh, you're really tall. Yeah, you I was like, tall. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just not And then to I felt the muscles like, oh, God, it does work out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been following you. It's not creepy. Don't worry. <laughs> so, guys, listen in. When you get into TCM, just get in there now, like after this process, because click on the link and do what you've got to do. You'll start following these guys and it, you'll realize you're going to be doing what I'm doing. You'll be checking everything out. Yeah. I'll follow your story, your personal story, because you just want to know everything that's happening. Yeah. You want to hear what's unfolding. You want to interact with the other students or mm. whatever they choose to call themselves. I call them little masters. Yeah. You know, there's so much that's going on. It's not your everyday coaching academy. Mm. It's nothing like that. It's like a home. It's mm. like a sense of belonging. And the change that you make is so quick. Like, it's incredible. Like, the accreditation just like, it just felt like it just went. Yeah. Ultimate launch, like I remember launching the business, like had my own t-shirts designed. Like, I was so excited. Love it. And I never forget that day. Every day that I wake up and I'm logging on, I think of that moment that I launched my business mm. and then I start with my clients. <sighs> I just allow myself to remember this is where you started and look where you are now. I love that. I, I made really it possible. But 90%, you know, that influence, that guidance, that navigation was through the coaching masters. <sighs> so thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I want to say thank you. Thank you, Karina. Honestly, I feel so grateful that you're here. And I feel so, and I, and I mean that in a bigger yeah. sense as well, you yeah. know, and I don't mean that just you're in this room, you know, but there were times throughout your life where it was a real possibility that you wouldn't be here yeah. with us. Yeah, that's true. That's factual. That's that medi factual. medically factual, you know. Medically factual. So. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you are. I'm getting to grow up, man. You're growing up. You're <laughs> I'm growing, growing that up. way. You really and I'm, are. I'm very grateful, it, and grateful for it. And thank you so much for this opportunity for me to be the first guest in the studio that I visualized myself in. Amazing. And it all started from a message of, you were born in King's College Hospital. I couldn't believe it when you <laughs> sent me that. Like, yeah. what, what is the ultimate, and, and I'm, the, it may not even be clear at this point, or it may be crystal clear, I don't know. I never want to assume anything. What's the ultimate vision for you? My ultimate vision is I see myself as a motivational speaker speaking on stage. That's, that's a thing that I imagine when we have a family, I imagine my, our child, me and my partner, child, like looking up and seeing mum on stage. Yeah. And then as that child grows, when they understand the adversity, they know that everything is possible because my mum's done this. Anything is possible. My intention, which I'm working on, is to bring out my second book. My first one was an e-book. Yeah. which is something you guys get to create when you yeah. do you know do the courses with the coaching masters like they literally navigate you through launching a website writing an ebook you know they give you all the tools that you need that ebook kind of like created a desire in me to do something else so i'm yeah. writing a book at the moment love that so i want i see myself on stage i want i really want to do talks with other speakers with you guys putting it out there it's in the bag and that's literally where I see myself next. You know, I want to have a family, but I want to have that career where I'm doing that kind of stuff. Mm. I love the coaching side, something that I'll always have available, but it'll be nice to have a team of people that I work with where they have those skills what, and I can do what I enjoy. What drives you more than anything? Love. Love, yeah. wow. See, that's. It's, I love that you've said that because 
there are so many different emotional states that you'd expect to hear, yeah. whether it be, you know, money money drives me or relationships drive me or just being known, being appreciated, mm. being famous, blah, blah, blah. Love really does underpin all of it, doesn't yeah. it, in so many I ways. Just, why why yeah. love for you? I, I now, I'm in a relationship where I'm loved unconditionally and that feeling, I can't even... It always makes me feel a bit emotional. Like I can't even express in words what that means because I never had it before. Mm. And to have it as an adult with another adult where it's like, I know that I'm safe. I know that I belong. I know that no one can harm me. You know, this stuff shouldn't be happening anyway. But when you go for it as a child, inside you have these feelings like this insecurity. Mm. I don't have it mm. anymore. And I believe just love wins everything. Yeah. You have a child, there's this unconditional love. There should be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I look into her eyes. It's just, I just, it's just love. And I just think when I see myself on stage, I see myself delivering that kind of level mm. of a talk where it's mm. just like people just connect. There's great speakers that we could mention, but I see myself as my own individual and being able to deliver that sense of love to people mm. and they want to pay for it you know they want to pay for it because they know they're going to get something different yeah it's valuable yeah hugely valuable yeah <laughs> so karina i mean it's been a roller coaster and i'm so glad you shared your journey in the way that you did with the level of vulnerability the level of truth level of value power everything love everything you brought to it you're welcome what's what are you instinctively feeling is what you want to say as we're, we're rounding it off and we're about to finish off and people have just been taken on a journey. Yeah. And we're gonna close this off. What, yeah. what, what's, what's your gut telling you? What's your mind telling you, your heart telling you? How do you wanna I feel like, this? you know, it's, it's been nice just to have that authentic expression and say what I really wanna say without any, you know, blocks to anything. I feel like the audience know the message is very clear. If there's something that you wanna do, you gotta go for it. If you need support, you need that navigation, get that navigation. That's, you know, hence the coaching masters, you know, people listening to the coaching masters, they're going to be listening for a reason. What is that reason? What is it you really want? What are you trying to achieve? What do you need help with? Who are you? You asked me that as a startup question. Mm. I've told you who I am. <laughs> I've told you where I I visualize myself moving forward. The power's in all of us. We need to step into our own space and just let the world feel the impact of that you know wow. there's something that um a very famous person said like people might not remember what you do but they'll always remember how you make them feel mm. it's, it's so true and that's something that i've always kept quite close to my heart that particular saying we have that ability to change lives mm. and we can do it through speaking we can do it, which is coaching is that, you know, yeah. you, it's powerful, thought provoking questions yeah. that are intentionally life changing. That's kind of like a motto that I use. And we affect people in a way where they will always remember how you made them feel. Totally. I have messages that people come back to me from years ago that I worked with that thank me for certain things that I've done, you know, because they remember how I made them feel. Mm. It's life changing, you know, doing coaching is life changing but making it so unique, like what I offer is so unique, it changes lives in a very different way. And you can find that thing that you have, mm. but you might need some help finding it. And that's mm. where coaching masters come into play. So I just say to everyone, you know, as the younger me, speaking as a younger me, I had that belief, you know, I believed so much that I was someone. I, my adversity didn't make me feel like I was small and nothing. They made me feel like I was someone yeah. and I am someone. And now I'm able to show that to the world. It just took a bit of navigation, you know? So that's my message. We love you, Karina. Love you too. Thanks for your time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs>